What's happening, guys? Brega Dan here. We are bringing you Shovel Knight Spectre of Torment, um, the new DLC for Shovel Knight that came out recently. It's on Switch, which is what I'm playing it on. Um, we're going to start a new game. Full disclosure, I've played some of Shovel Knight before, um, Spectre of Torment, that is, um, but my recordings were all screwed up, so I'm trying to do it again. So the beginning of this game, uh, you will see me <laughs> at least feigning an attempt at being um, competent at this game, um, but I assure you... By the end of it, I will screw up. So, let's put our name in. Let's get this going. Once again, same Shovel Knight. Same awesome graphics, same awesome music. Um, except this time you were playing Spectre Knight. Long ago, the lands were untamed and roamed by legendary adventurers. <clears throat> graphics in this game are just beautiful. The music is so good. Um, but although the land is peaceful, for some, freedom is a far gone memory. Uh, the Enchantress from the first one. Uh, Spectre Knight, servant to the Enchantress, has been given a harrowing task. If you don't know, by the way, um, this particular uh, Shovel Knight expansion is a prequel. Um, and as it says here, he must recruit a group of knights and form an invincible order, which is the Order of No Quarter um, from the original Shovel Knight game. Um, so. That is our task. With each member gathered, a treasured keepsake uh, grows in power. Um, and as you'll see, because he's the Grim Reaper, uh, the picture on the left and the picture on the right are who he is now and who he used to be. So, an artifact that can only restore his humanity but when his task is complete. And it looks like there's Shield Knight on the left from the original Shovel Knight game, which is kind of cool. So, now he leaves the confines of the Tower of Fate. Um, it's time for the Reaper to pursue his quarry. Alrighty, so, a few things right off the bat. He's got a couple different mechanics, a couple of mechanics that are the same. Still dig up all of his uh, piles of money. But now he can climb up walls. So anything that's got a uh, brick wall or like a, a dirt wall like here, you can climb up. If it's got um, grass, he can't, as you can see. Um, he's got a couple new mechanics. So you can do a lot of the Ninja Gaiden kind of jumping. Um, like a bunch of money here. Um, he's got one very key difference, and I'll show it to you when we get to it, um, but to explain the HUD right now, the, uh, red skull at the top, those are basically your music notes from the original Shovel Knight. Um, the dark, no, the money is obviously money, uh, but it works a little differently in this game. Uh, darkness is your, uh, basically your magic power, and your will is your health. Alright, so first of all, here's our first red skull, again, it's like the music notes that you give to the bard. There are 10 in each level. And now here's another mechanic that's different. If you are on one of these destructible blocks and you jump, they go away. So, we're looking to, care, uh, to take into account because it changes some of the jumping puzzles, so. All right, here we are at the uh, main mechanic of Spectre Knight. So if you jump, if you see that big red line that's going across the screen, you can basically jump and boost yourself with that. Now it changes some of the puzzles because you have to wait in some instances to jump at certain intervals. And you can change the angle of that uh, of that red line to accommodate your jump a little better. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. And they do do some uh, some interesting little uh, changes on that too, where you can reverse the polarity of all the jumps and stuff like that. So because it's a lock on, I just got hit like an idiot. You can kind of cheese this at uh, mini boss. You can just jump and keep pulling away and keep whacking him until he dies. Here's another fun little thing. I'm gonna try and see if I can get everything around it so you can see it, but the food you get in this game is... Uh, I couldn't do it. Uh, the food you get in this game is all rotten, because you are dead. Um, but, again, it's gonna look like I'm pretty competent at the game in the beginning. Um, there are parts that I had a, a really hard time with, um, and I'm sure I will get to them again. But, in the beginning, I've played this like three times now, trying to get a good recording, so... You're gonna see some... Uh, some me flying through the intro level and stuff. But I'm going to try and do um, one boss per video, and uh, hopefully we'll get as much as we can done. But I'll try and get all the secrets. I know with the ten... Um, damn it, come on. Oh, I have to jump off this. Dummy. Alright. So we jump here, grab this. 
Now money is important because it's going to open up vendors. You basically have to make sacrifices in the hub world um, to open up vendors that will give you the ability to buy armor and upgrades to your special weapons. Now here's one of the puzzles. If I didn't jump across and hit that first, or not jump rather, run across and hit that first, if I jumped on any of these they would have gone away and I might not have been able to get it. The puzzle will be reiterated right here where it's like this big tower. Because if I jump off of this, some of these things go away. You have to be careful that you don't get rid of them before you actually get all your money and all these things destroyed. So, there you go. So, you can see the food's rotten. Like, the chicken's actually a rotten chicken because you're dead, which is hilarious to me. It's a great little touch. Once again, Yacht Club Games killing it in this game. So. Alright, now. Here's the first part of the puzzle. Grab that. Kill this. And a lot of these times, like, to get these secrets, you're gonna have to go here, like, go over one way, and then come back the other way to try and, uh... To try and traverse the correct way. This one, I believe, is a little interesting. This is gonna show the timing, so... You have to kind of make sure... that you line up those, uh... Like, in this case, that thing is lower than me, so if I jump, it's gonna propel me downward, so I have to go past it... to go back up. One of the... Oh! One of the interesting, uh changes in this game, which I actually really, really like. Alright, so let's get him. Kill this guy, climb up here, get the secret. And again, because you destroy the ground, if you jump off of it, you can find secrets a little more easily. So let's go up here and grab this chest. Now, he doesn't have a limited jump like Plague Knight does. He's got pretty much the same jump as Shovel Knight, but no real downward thrust attack that lets you get out of, uh, falling on enemies, so you gotta be a little more careful here. Alright, same checkpoint, now let's go get this thing. This is a, um, a Wisp container, a Willful Wisp. The Willful Wisp basically extends your health bar max uh, by one, and they stay permanently, so they're always there. So, let's go get this guy. I think in all three playthroughs I have fallen on that, uh, that blob every single time. I know it's there and I keep screwing it up. Um, Alright, so here, you're gonna wait here for these bubbles to go by, and then get that. Oh, busted that one up a little bit. Badly timed. Kill him, grab ourselves some rotten food. Alright, so this one's like one of these cases where you gotta traverse backwards to get it. This is gonna be interesting. I almost screwed it up. Woof. Alright, so, again, jumping on these platforms. You wanna get all the money, you gotta be careful about it. All right, and the next secret here, next little bit of money. And I'll take you through the hub world and show you all the, the vendors and everything to so make sure you guys don't miss anything. Get through here, yep. All right, get that secret over here, which is again, you have to wait to go falling through them. Get that treasure chest. And we're gonna collect those money and grab the last of the red skulls for the intro stage. Which is awesome. We're gonna fall past this guy, make sure we boost. Ah, oh, that was cheap. Alright, whatever. No money. I believe we're at the boss anyway, who will be an old friend if you've played the game before. As you can see, Black Knight is back. Black Knight, halt. Uh, these foul lands are no place for commoners. Turn back whoever you are. Fool, I've come here for you. You will kneel before me, bow before the Enchantress, and join her order. Uh, your cutting words are no match for my cutting blows. I'll teach you a lesson in humility. All right, so flips the script on you a little bit. He says, "Come, Terrapin, my shield, she, my shelled steed." If you don't get the joke, a Terrapin is a turtle. He's the Terrapin, and this boss is not terribly difficult. So, because of that lock on for jumping, you can kind of um, navigate this boss pretty effectively if you stay in the air and watch out for his bouncing. There you go. Screw it up. You can bounce off the Terrapin, too, so you can kind of just hop around as necessary. Try and get a good angle on him. It shouldn't be too much uh, struggle for you, though. He's not a particularly difficult boss. I think he's got one more hit left. Yep, there he goes. Later, dude. Another dope animation from the guys at Yacht Club. Simulating you beat the level. And now we're going to go to the hub world. We finished the first thing, so... Pant, pant, that fighting style, could it be, Donovan? Uh, were you claimed by the tower? Or, but you were claimed by the tower. 
The tower grows in power each moment the Enchantress has plans for you and will grant what you desire. I won't be led astray. Your standing before me means there's no hope for the one I seek. I'm glad you are safe, Donovan, but keep your distance. The Donovan I knew would surely know better than to pursue me further. So Donovan is your human form. Spectre Knight is your inhuman reaper form. So this is the tower, um, basically the hub world. And you are going to get a visit from the Enchantress to start the game. So, the Enchantress. So, you've returned. I assume Black Knight has joined our ranks. Uh, neither words nor sigh had any effect. The fool persists in some fruitless quest. Indeed, it seems I am dealing with only fools here. And I was a fool. Was I a fool to trust you? Tarry here no longer, and for your sake, pray that the others are less obstinate. Bring the knights immediately. Okay. So now that we're done with her, first thing right off the bat, secret. So this guy... Got a hilarious accent. Oh, I'm the edge farmer. Oh, I am. You think I'm your edge? You do, do. Oh, I'll be the judge of that. Oh, I will. All right. So these platforms you basically surf off of. It's kind of cool. It's a cool little mechanic. Ooh, screwed it up a little bit. You can do this without doing that though. Uh, Grant yourself a red skull here. One of the overworld red skulls. He does nothing else, but there is a secret back here, a challenge area, which I will get to in a later video. Um, basically what you do is you talk to him. He forms this platform out of the ground that raises up and basically goes infinitely up while throwing new obstacles at you. Uh, and he trails below you um, with an electric current that if you get hit by, you instantaneously die. So you have to uh, get through the whole thing, and he says there's a reward, I haven't gotten that far yet, so. But we'll do it eventually, and it may take me an entire video to finish it because it was very difficult, but you know what it is. All right, so to give you an explanation of the overhub world, these little uh, wisps right here are your darkness. They automatically fill up your darkness the whole way. We can go right here and get some money and a red skull. The red skulled man up here is basically the bard. He is looking for red skulls. Be my beloved, my betrothed, my heart breaks for her. Red skull lies misplaced. Oh, to see her crimson face once more. If you should happen upon a red skull, even a hundred of them, then I beg you, please bring them all to me. In a past life, I hunted curios, but I'd trade them all away just to see my love again. Surely these would inter interest you. So basically, he is your um, side attacker, like, uh, I guess, equipable weapon uh, dealer. Uh, and it costs uh, red skulls. So I'm going to buy the throwing sickle. The cool thing about this uh, expansion is... Um, you know, I'll read this first. All your curio is well guarded. While I can lead you there, you'll have to battle your way out. Basically, you have to pick up the curio he gives you. And using only the curio and nothing else, get through the little uh, bonus area. It's really easy, but it's cool to uh, to show you how to do it. Basically, it tells you the area is cursed. You can only use this. And it teaches you how to use this. So as you're going through these, all of these areas have... Um, Darkness refilling stations, so you can just kind of never run out. It's not very difficult. The exit's right there. This guy's dead. And we out. So, excellent. Away we go. So, I'm going to buy the first two while I'm here. Um, he's going to look at the skulls. That Curious no mere bauble. Use it wisely. Look at the skulls. None of them are his uh, betrothed. I'm going to talk again. And I'm going to grab the Will Skull. So, we're going to do the second one. Um, and from here, we're gonna fall down. This area is cursed as well. Tread carefully. You're gonna pick up the Will Skull. As you can see, it dropped my health all the way down. It's a way to show you that the Will Skull refills your health. Um, and you can refill this, try and get through here without getting hit, maybe. Oh, got hit once. All right, no big deal. Get out of here. Excellent. Away we go. So that's it. It just kind of gives you an idea of how to use it. Not a big deal. Refills your health, too. So. I have four skulls now. Now these people, these little things, um, if you're familiar with Legion, they're kind of like that. You see all those little uh, um, black dots in the back with two um, eyes each? Um, they are what form Legion after you make sacrifices of money to them. I think it's three sacrifices per station. So, uh, Spectre Knight, these creatures are gathering around a vessel marked with a cloak. Perhaps I'll make an offering. Offer 800 gold, yes. So I believe this one costs 2400, it's three sacrifices. Um, the vessel can hold far more than this pittance, but it's a start. So you're going to make... Oh, damn it, I used that on accident. Um, so we're going to use another one. And we're going to use another one. Now that we've offered enough to fill up the tank, all the little creatures are going to go and fill up that cloak. Um, he's surprised. State your business, Abomination. Who are you? We are... Manny, which is like Legion, which is we for we are Legion, for we are many. Um, we like your gold. We like your cloak. Touch it. New powers. Yes, we cloak you in darknesses. 
So basically, these are all of the different cloaks, um, varying different powers. This uh, Cloak of Clemency is lose will and darkness instead of perishing in pits and spikes. Um, and you drop less gold when you fall in battle. So basically, if you fall into a pit and you have will and, go and uh, darkness with you, you don't die. Uh, rail mail, um, when you when you land, you can grind along surfaces and spikes. Um, you can charge an attack. This does nothing, it just looks cool. And rhyme of risk, break checkpoints to lower your max will, but boost attacks and regenerate darkness until you fall in battle. So we're going to buy the Cloak of Clemency, because that's a huge deal for us. Um, this lady explains to you that she will. you can buy wisp chests for her, where the health is, if you find them. Uh, she needs money, basically. If you find them, though, in the world, um, she will give them to you. So basically, there's Clockwork Tower, Explodatorium, and a Lickyard all have one. So we're going to go up here, next. Um, talk to this NPC. Uh, Creech. Uh, it sure is drafting here, but I still carry on. It's just a joke, you know, scavenging for customers. If you don't get the joke, a carry-on is a bird. That's a carry-on. Um, this is the Amiibo lady. She'll let you play co-op if you use her. I have the Shovel Knight uh, Amiibo, but I will not be playing co-op right now. Um, and here is Bone Clang. Oh, it's you. I saw you slicing and dicing the planes earlier. Wow, round of juice on me. Gives you three pink gems. This, I can't figure out exactly what it does yet, but we'll get there eventually, I'm sure. This is another sacrifice, but it takes a thousand gold per thing, and what he does is he upgrades the power, or um, I guess the range and skills of your different um, curios. So we're gonna do this, there's a red skull hidden in here. You can go across here. There's a mirror that I can't figure out what to do yet with it, unless I keep hitting it. Maybe that does something. Oh, I never did that before, nice. Scrying glass, brine, blight, and fires my bright. Your feats are laid bare to my all-knowing sight. Parapicio Ascensius. Fifty is the number of walls you've scaled. Orbidium Restrona. The number of times you've fallen in battle is zero. Uh, Chronologico. The total time you've spent adventuring is fifteen minutes. Incisium Anic... and Tecidum. Oh, Incisium Anic... Tecidum. The number of dash slashes you've done is eighty-four. Clearly, this is powerful sorcery. Thank you, Bewitched Mirror. So, um... I guess this is how you find out your stats in the game. I just found that out for the first time. That's pretty awesome. Dog does nothing, yells at you. This guy just goes, he can't believe he's dealing with the Enchantress. It's pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to give you one little, uh, one more secret. Not really a secret, but it's uh, a cool little thing. That secret I showed you very, very early on in the uh, hub world, um, where you get to that area with the flying rails. You can hop up here and get right back there. Kind of cool. Nothing important, but kind of cool. So we're going to go down here. We're gonna get our darkness refilled by the, uh, the pedestal here. Hop through, and this is essentially your hub world. The Dark Accolade will open the, uh, the portal and you can go to any level you want. So, hail Lord Spectre Knight, glory to the Enchantress. She has entrusted me to operate the Dark Portal. Cross through it and you'll reach your target in a mere moment. Shall I prepare the dark uh, the magic mirror for your departure, my lord? Uh, do it. So as you can see, all the levels here, same guys as usual, Propeller Knight, Treasure Knight, Mole Knight, Plague Knight, Polar Knight, King Knight, Tinker Knight, and the new one, Phantom Striker, who is one of the random encounter uh, enemies in the original Shovel Knight game, so now he's got a level. Um, but, as we have uh, got about 20 minutes here, I'm going to call this video at this point. Um, in the next video, we're going to take on uh, King Knight in Pride More Keep. Um, it's not very difficult, I've done this one before. I believe where I left off last, I did Pride More Keep, and I did the Mole Knight Lost City, so I know at least these two maps. So we're going to do these... Uh, next time. So I believe we'll do one each time. They take about 20 minutes each. So uh, King Knight next time. Thank you guys for watching. I've been Bregadan. If you like what you saw here, like, sub, and I will see you the next time for Printmore Keep at King Knight. Thanks for watching. Take it easy, guys.